Warning, this procedure utilizes high temperatures and corrosive chemicals. Proper safety measures should be in place. Sulfur dichloride is a foul-smelling liquid that releases hydrogen chloride and a variety of sulfur-related compounds when exposed to air. Be sure to work outside or in a well-ventilated area. A few videos back, I mentioned that chloric acid was the most unpleasant chemical I've worked with so far. Well, I regret to say that this title was promptly reassigned the moment I produced the first few drops of today's chemical, sulfur dichloride. Let me preface by saying that the smell produced by this chemical is one of the worst I've ever experienced. The best way I can describe it is candied farts mixed with burning rubber and hydrochloric acid. It also has a whole host of other nasty properties, which you'll get a chance to see soon enough. For this synthesis, we'll only need three things. Sulfur, a heat source, and chlorine gas. The sulfur was purchased at a local farm and gardening store as this powder, and my heat source of choice was once again a blowtorch. The chlorine gas was produced by reacting hydrochloric acid with TCCA-based chlorinating tablets. I didn't have any hydrochloric acid on hand, so I made some by reacting salt water with sulfuric acid. To start, we add a decent amount of sulfur to a glass tube, set up the chlorine generator on one side and the receiving flask on the other. When everything is ready, charge the addition foam with your hydrochloric acid and begin dripping it onto the crushed TCCA tablets. Chlorine gas should immediately flood the apparatus, and you can start heating the sulfur. As the sulfur melts and evaporates, it will react with the chlorine to produce two main chemicals, sulfur monochloride and sulfur dichloride. I really want the sulfur dichloride because it's a necessary ingredient in the synthesis of thionyl chloride, which I'll be attempting soon as a part of a collaboration with Thysoid Laboratories, a German chemistry channel which I highly recommend you go and check out. So to help favor the formation of the dichloride, I made sure there was an excess of chlorine gas flowing through the system. Sulfur dichloride is a beautiful cherry red liquid, while sulfur monochloride is more of an amber yellow color, so it's pretty easy to tell which one you're creating. If you want sulfur monochloride, just redistill the product in the presence of excess sulfur. Anyways, you'll need to keep heating the sulfur until all of it reacts. This isn't a self-sustaining reaction as far as I can tell, and constant heating of the sulfur is a must. As the reaction progresses, you'll inevitably be greeted with the horrendous smell of sulfur chlorides. I mentioned this earlier, but sulfur chlorides are truly one of the foulest things I've ever come across, and there are a few things that compare to them. They smell like someone took the odor of lit matches and fireworks, allowed it to rot, and then sent it through a tire fire. Really, it's quite unique and very unpleasant. After a while, all the sulfur will have reacted away, leaving the glass tube completely empty. In the receiving flask, you should see a nice red liquid. This is mostly sulfur dichloride based on the color, but some sulfur monochloride is inevitably intermixed with it, along with some sulfur that either came over while the reaction was going, or formed when the sulfur chlorides contacted moisture. So the logical next step is to purify our product. First, I pass it through a coffee filter to remove any of the solid junk in the mixture. Next, I set up another chlorine generator and begin pumping chlorine gas through the sulfur chlorides. This should convert most of the sulfur monochloride to the dichloride. An optional third step will be distilling off the more volatile sulfur dichloride, but I chose not to do this because sulfur chlorides tend to leave a lot of unwanted sulfur deposits on glassware, and I didn't have the heart to put my gram condenser through that. After doing our little workup, I was left with roughly 50 milliliters of bright red sulfur dichloride. This was somewhat of an imprecise procedure, so I didn't really bother calculating a yield. And now, let's look at a few reactions with sulfur dichloride. First, let's try burning it. By itself, sulfur dichloride isn't flammable, but I read somewhere that it can ignite combustibles like wood or paper, so let's soak a paper towel in it and see what happens. The paper towel failed to ignite in the presence of sulfur dichloride. If anything, this compound seems to inhibit combustion. It did allow a lot of toxic smoke, however, which was mostly sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride. Anyways, now for our next contestant, sugar. This, once again, gives a very disappointing result, even when I hit with my blowtorch. So let's try something much more reactive, our old friend magnesium. Nothing? Really? I thought this stuff was at least supposed to be corrosive. It won't even react under the heat of my blowtorch. It only reacts when I add a drop of water, but I'd say that's just because sulfur chlorides turn into hydrogen chloride when mixed with water. Overall, the reactivity of sulfur dichloride seems a bit underwhelming so far. So let's move on to a few solvents. First up, let's try water. Huh, this reaction is actually a bit tamer than I imagined, but that actually makes sense. Sulfur chlorides produce sulfur when they react with water, and sulfur coats the droplets of sulfur dichloride, preventing them from reacting further. Of course, the sulfur dichloride does eventually leak out and turn into this fine precipitate of elemental sulfur on contact with water. Next, let's try methanol. I didn't really know what to expect from this reaction, maybe some dimethyl sulfide, methane thiol, or even methylene chloride. But when I added the sulfur dichloride, this happened. There was no dramatic change in smell, so I don't think any organosulfur compounds were created. 
The only thing that resulted was this thick cloud of what looks like sulfur, which eventually turned more yellow and gelatinous, almost like an egg yolk. Maybe this is some kind of polychlorosulfane compound? I really have no idea. Anyways, there you have it, the synthesis of sulfur dichloride. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to like this video and leave a comment or suggestion for a future video or reaction. And if you'd like to support the production of science videos like this, consider donating or supporting my work on Patreon. As always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you sometime after I figure out how to clean all the sulfur off this glassware. Lab coats out.